children. This is Dame May Whitty with her golden box. The golden box of fairy tales. Listen now, closely. From around my neck on its silken strand, I take the magic key. I unlock the box, so... And out comes the story of Rapunzel. Once upon a time, there lived a man and his wife who'd hoped for a long, long while, and oh, so very, very much for a little girl. And at last, the woman knew that her dream was coming true. Now, behind the house of this man and woman was a beautiful garden, and it was filled with lovely flowers and plants and vegetables, but the garden wasn't theirs. No, indeed. It was surrounded by a high, forbidding wall, and it belonged... To a witch. Yes, a strange, mysterious woman named Gothel who wove wicked spells. Well, one day, while the woman was waiting for her baby to come, she was peering out of her upstairs window, which overlooked the garden of the witch. And there below her, she saw a bed of Rapunzel. Now, Rapunzel, in case you don't know, is a salad like lettuce, only many, many times more delicious. And like all salads, very good for you. Well, the Rapunzel there in the garden below her looked so green, so tender, so altogether delicious, that the woman said to her husband, I simply must have some of that Rapunzel. What, cried the man, quaking in his boots. But that's impossible, my love. You know that garden belongs to Gothel, the witch. Yes, I do know, the woman answered. And yet, if I don't somehow eat some of that exquisite mouth-watering Rapunzel... I shall surely perish. And she gave such a sigh that her husband saw he must indeed get a bowl of the salad, no matter what the cost. So, very late that night, when the moon slipped under a cloud, the man climbed over the wall and into the witch's garden. Stealthily, he crept to the bed of Rapunzel, scarcely breathing He bent down towards the luscious leaves, and just as his hand was about to pluck some of it there, above him, looking down like a cold blue flame, stood Gothel the witch. Man, she cried, how dare you come into my garden to steal my precious Rapunzel? Although he was almost tongue-tied with terror, he managed somehow to tell the witch how his wife hungered for the salad, how indeed, if she didn't have some, she'd surely die. Gothel listened, and yes, she even felt a little pity. I see, she said. Very well. I'll let your wife have the Rapunzel, all you can carry. But, well, to hear what she said then, you'd better put on the next record very quickly. But, on this condition, the witch said, that when the child arrives, you give it to me. What, cried the man? Oh, no. Oh, yes, ordered the witch. No, no, begged the man. Oh, yes, commanded the witch. I'll be good to it, but have that child I must. And what did the husband say to this? Why, he poor fellow agreed to the terms. For what else could he do? And so when the baby, a lovely little girl, was born, the witch appeared at once and took her away. She was very beautiful, and her chief glory was her long, shining golden hair. The witch named the child Rapunzel, and on her twelfth birthday she took her into the forest and locked her away in a great high tower. Now this tower was a strange tower indeed. It had neither door nor stairs, but only a little window at the very, very top. And when the witch came visiting, she'd stand at the foot of the tower and call out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Whereupon Rapunzel from her window would undo her lovely braids, which fell all the way to the ground, and the witch would climb up them and into the chamber at the top of the tower. So things stood for a long time, until one day, who should come riding through the forest but the son of the king? And as he rode, he suddenly heard a little way off. Yes, it was Rapunzel. Rapunzel singing. Following the voice, the prince found the tower, and he wanted ever so much to enter, to look upon the lips that could form so sweet a song. 
But as you've already guessed, he couldn't get in. There wasn't any door. So, quite discouraged, the prince went away. But he came back. Yes, each day he came back. And at last, one summer afternoon, as he stood watching from the shadow of a great tree, his devotion was rewarded. For who should come to the foot of the tower but the witch? And what should she sing but the telltale words? Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And lo, while the prince watched in fascination, down from the top of the tower fell the golden braids. Up them, hand over hand, went the witch, and she vanished into the little window. Well, the prince said to himself, so that's how it's done. And the very next day, just as dusk began to fall in the forest, who do you suppose was back at the foot of the tower? Why, of course, you're right, the prince. And had he forgotten the proper words? Do we need to remind him? No, sir. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, he sang softly. Let down your hair. And down came the tresses. Up climbed the prince, and he was through the window and into the tower almost quicker than it'll take you to put on the next record. Now, when the prince first entered the tower, Rapunzel, who, as you can see, had led a somewhat sheltered life, was quite terrified at the sight of this bold young man. But the prince spoke to her so gently that soon her heart no longer fluttered, but quite softened towards him. After all, she told herself, this young man is not only kind, he's also young and very handsome. Now, having heard this much, it shouldn't surprise you to hear a little more. And so, when the prince asked this lovely girl to be his bride, Rapunzel modestly answered, Oh, oh, yes. But then she said, But how can I marry you when I'm locked away in this tower? For lack, I know of no way to escape. While they both puzzled over this, the prince suddenly said, I think I have it. Is it true the witch visits you only by day? Quite true, said Rapunzel, her hand in his. She comes only by day. Then I, said the prince, shall come only by night. And each time I come, I'll bring you a skein of silk. Till finally, you can weave a ladder by which you may climb down from the tower and ride away with me on my horse. And so for a while it went as they'd planned it, with the witch coming to the tower by day and the handsome prince by night. And in the hours when she was alone, Rapunzel began to weave the silken ladder. But then, one morning, Rapunzel, poor girl, while the witch had climbed in, let slip with something which should be a lesson to us all, and that is to think twice before we speak. Oh, Gothel, she said innocently, how is it that you are so much heavier to draw up the side of the tower than the young prince when he comes to see me? What? screamed the witch. And now the cat was out of the bag. You wicked child. You've deceived me. I swore on my grandmother's beard to separate you from the rest of the world. And separate you I shall. Oh, but she was angry. Catching the pencil's tresses, those lovely golden braids, she wrapped them twice around one hand, and seizing a pair of scissors with the others, she went snip, snap, snip. Snap! Until limply on the floor lay the braids. Nor did the witch stop with this. In her fury, she carried Rapunzel far, far away to a barren desert place and left the poor child to eat out her heart in misery. Nor was Gothel's revenge even then complete. Returning to the tower, she laid a trap. A trap for the unsuspecting prince. Picking up Rapunzel's golden braids, from where they lay on the floor, she fastened them to the window and let them fall to the ground. That evening, when the prince climbed up and came through the window, it was not into the arms of his beloved Rapunzel, but rather into the terrifying presence of the witch. Gracious, we can't leave him there, can we? So let's change the record. The prince stood aghast. Staring at the witch who mocked at him. Ha ha, she cried. You'd fetch your dearest, would you? 
Rob the nest, would you? <laughs> well, the bird has gone. Yes, the cat has got it. And you'll never see the bird again. For the cat will now scratch out your eyes. And with that, the powerful witch seized the prince and threw him from the tower. And by her evil magic, he fell in a patch of brambles. Now, brambles are sharp, you know, like thorns or nettles. And his eyes were pierced so that he could no longer see. And in his pain and despair, the poor prince wandered off with no notion of where or how to go, because he couldn't see. And all he could do was to live pitifully on roots and berries and to mourn the loss of his darling Rapunzel. And that's how it went for a long, long time. But after a while, you know, there's a stop to all misery and every pain must end. One day, as he wandered forlornly near the edge of the forest and not far from a certain desert place, It was. He could hardly believe it. Yet he couldn't be mistaken. For the loss of his sight had made his hearing sharper. It was Rapunzel. Rapunzel's song. She was calling to him. Calling him to her. Hopefully, eagerly, he groped his way towards the music. Stumbling, sometimes falling. But getting up and pressing on. Losing his way and finding it again. But always getting closer, ever closer. Until at last, she was in his arms. And when she knew it was really her prince, she did what any girl would have done. She wept for joy. And two of her tears fell on his eyes. And then it was proved that it wasn't only the wicked witch who could work a spell. For a pencil's tears of love bathed the eyes of the prince and suddenly they were once more clear and he could see again. And at that instant, far away in the forest, there was a flash of fire and a blinding light. And when the sun shone again, the tower had disappeared and with it, the witch had vanished too. And so... Rapunzel and the prince made their way back to the kingdom of the prince's father, who was, of course, the king. And there, they found a royal welcome waiting for them. And better than the feasts and the grand reception, there waiting for her were Rapunzel's own mother and father. Think of the joy of that. And did they live happily ever after? Well, don't you know? There never was a happier couple than the prince and his Rapunzel. <laughs>